Hey, what's going on YouTube? Hope you guys are well today. Let's do a little video. So I'd like to title this video, best trading indicators that I use. All right, so let's talk about indicators because this is a big part about understanding price action and reading charts in general. So you're gonna see a million videos that say, best trading indicators to use or why you should use a MACD or an RSI or a momentum or a stochastic or a volume or this and that. All right. Which one do you use or why would you use an indicator anyways? All right. So let's go ahead. This platform right here is called tradingview.com. They're a very good charting platform and I highly recommend them. So you're looking at a price chart right now. Each one of these candles represents one day's worth of price action. And this is the NASDAQ 100 futures contract nq all right so let's go ahead and look at indicators here on trading view and what we're going to notice right away is that if we go into built-in indicators and strategies you're going to see that there's about a hundred different ones here so the question becomes now which one do i use and why and the more important question would be is it going to make me money or help me make money in, in the markets? You're gonna find a million videos on YouTube that tell you why you should use advanced decline, why you should use Bollinger Bands, why you should use a money flow indicator. What do these things really do? That's a good question. Well, the majority of indicators are simply code that has been written to process data points and then spit out another number, all right? If we go into public library, you're gonna see here that these are indicators that have been created by other people. You can create your own indicators for whatever you want, essentially. So from the list of about over 100 indicators here, and on top of that, the ability to create your own indicators for whatever you want, what do you use? So I understand you completely when you say, I have no idea what to do, I have no idea what to look at, and everything is just noise at this point, all right? So. I would suggest starting off with no indicators right here. There's no indicators on this chart, it's just price bars and you can change it to view it in any kind of bars you like. So for example, there we go. So guys, in this video, I am going to show you the indicators that I plot on my chart that I find give me value and give me the information I'm looking for when it comes to identifying key price points in the markets I'm trading. First and foremost, that's the most important thing is identifying key price points where traders are doing business, institutional traders that is. First of all, I wanna say that in regards to trading, whatever kind of trading you do, you need a trigger. You can have a trigger that's based on an indicator or a combination of indicators. Now, triggers for me generally result from watching the tape or the order flow of the market. So if you've seen some of my other videos, I always talk about reading the tape and reading price action and order flow on the price ladder, basically. So the chart for me is mainly used to do volume profile analysis to identify those key levels that I'm talking to you about, all right? So let's get right into it here. All right, guys, first indicator on the list that is bound to make you tons of money in the markets is, in fact, PS4 controller. Just kidding. First indicator that on my list here, I would say is exponential moving average. All right, so a moving average is exactly what it is. It just kind of summarizes the average of the price bars in the time frame that you set it to. So this EMA is set to 21. So it sums up the average of the last 21 events and gives you an average of those events and it plots a line on the chart. That's what a moving average is. Now, exponential moving average, all it does is it simply gives more weight to the more recent price moves rather than having all the price points balanced equally. So if you plot a normal moving average on your chart versus an exponential moving average, you will notice that the exponential moving average follows the price slightly closer. So on my trading view charts, I generally use two moving averages on the chart and they act only as a visual guide, nothing more than that, depending on the market. But I've noticed that NASDAQ and S&P 500, a lot of NASDAQ and tech names, they tend to respect their exponential moving averages on multiple time frames. In fact, so I've noticed five minute time frame, hourly time frame, even the one and two minute time frames, it definitely spends some time respecting these moving averages. And you'll see a lot of times where the eight or 12 exponential moving average is in fact acting as a form of support or resistance in some cases, right? I use it simply as a visual guide. I do not use it as a trigger to enter the trade. The moving average itself is a lagging indicator, which means that it will change its value after the price has changed its value 
And depending on what you set as the source, in this case, I have it set to the close of the bar, it will be lagging even more. So if I set it to the open of the bar, you'll notice that the indicator moved slightly lower if I set it to the close, right? So you can experiment with that right there. So just to show you, my two moving averages on this chart are in fact the eight and 21 exponential moving average. Now on this chart on TWS, um, on any time frames 30 seconds or below, I would prefer to use the 12 and 26 exponential moving average because I found that the eight was just slightly too close for the 30 second time frame. All right. So I guess that would also apply to tick charts and the likes. So I think that pretty much covers exponential moving averages. And again, you can look at them on multiple time frames, and you're going to see how a lot of the time they act as a form of support or resistance because a lot of the time you see these moving averages acting as a form of resistance or support, or sometimes you'll just see it acting as a guide, right? So again, just a visual guide and that is pretty much it. Let's move on to the next indicator on the list, which is in fact the volume profile. All right, guys, so there's two kinds of volume profiles that I generally use. One of them is the total volume profile of the market. So generally, why we use a volume profile is so we can identify areas of high volume and high participation and areas of low volume and low participation because both those things tell us important things about our market. So we look at the total volume of the market on the time frame that you select. Another way to look at volume profiles is looking at session volume right here. This sort of originates from the concept of market profile, where you generally pay a lot of attention to looking at individual session volumes and you compare them to help identify those key price points that you're looking for. Right. So we find inflection points of where the market is likely to react based on levels on the volume profile, all right? And again, the volume profile is only there to help us identify these key levels where institutional money is coming in or leaving the market. Very important, in fact. So I also use regular volume, but the thing about regular volume is that it only pretty much can get, tell you if the volume is above average or below average. I mean, this is a common pattern. If you look at a volume chart on the day, you're generally going to see a spike in the morning and then it's going to slowly decay going into about 12, one o'clock Eastern time. And then it might pick up again in the afternoon. But personally, I haven't found much use for the traditional volume indicator other than potentially above average volume from time to time. So if you look at this little line here, this is a volume moving average. So any spike above this will signify a volume that was above the average of whatever I have this set to in this case, 20 period, right? So for the last 20 bars at 1135 AM, there was above average volume on the bull side. All right. So again, but I would definitely put more precedence onto the volume profile and onto that session volume, of course. All right, so we're slowly grinding our way through this video here. The next indicator I use on my trading view chart is pivot points, and it's a very simple indicator, in fact. So all it does is it will put in highs and lows based on whatever amount you set it to. I have mine set to 12 in this case, and you can see that some of these highs and lows appeared on the chart in various locations, and this will also change depending on what time frame you look at. So here you can see the high was 437, and then it was 438. So that's kind of convenient. So you don't have to sit there zooming in on the bar and figuring out what exactly was the high and low of each bar, whereas it can plot in your highs and lows relatively easy. And if you want to see more of them, you just simply set this to a lower number. If you want to see less of them, you set it to a higher number. All right. You can also change the style of it, this and that. All right. So the pivot points indicator is not an indicator that's going to tell you where or how to trade, but it will have some levels being shown onto your chart just generally for ease of viewability. All right. So the next indicator we will talk about is the volume weighted average price. So VWAP. So this is a very popular indicator and it's used by a lot of retail traders and institutional traders, most probably. And whether or not it will help you in your trading, I think is kind of irrelevant. Um, but the thing about VWAP is that you just have to understand it for what it is. It is the volume weighted average price. So it's the average price based on the amount of volume that has traded over all prices. So you can see here based on the volume that traded here all across this price zone, this is in fact the volume weighted average price. Now, whether or not the volume weighted average price is going to act as an inflection point, I personally think it's pretty irrelevant. You're probably going to find better results using a volume profile to figure out um, inflection points or key price points versus using a VWAP. There are occurrences where the VWAP does act as an inflection point, 
But again, it generally will line up with another sort of level based on supply and demand imbalances, all right? So I wouldn't put too much precedence onto that VWAP, but again, it's just a good indicator and you can use it as more of a visual guide than anything. So on bull trend days like today, you're gonna see the VWAP sort of sloping up but again, it's not gonna be in play for any part of the day. So don't be looking to buy a VWAP in the case of a bull trend day because you're never gonna get filled, of course. Anyhow, not quite important. Anyhow, okay, so let's move on to the next indicator on the list here. One indicator I've been turned on to recently, which is also acting as a visual guide, which in fact would be called the standard deviation channels or linear regression channels, either one you wanna call it, right? What it does is based on the time frame you set it to, so I have this one set to 80. So over the last 80 bars in this case, it is going to make an average of all of the price points and then it's going to plot a line on the chart from the start to the end of the 80 bars. And based on if the average decreased or increased over those 80 bars, it's going to either plot an upward sloping line, a flat line, or a downward sloping line. So in this case, it's slightly downward sloping even though we trended higher. This means that over the last 80 bars on this 30 minute chart, the average amount of bars that traded lower was higher than the average amount of bars that traded higher. But I believe it also includes the length of the bars and the volatility because what the standard deviation channel does essentially apart from plotting what is said to be the mean of the price movements we also have these standard deviations on the bottom and on the top of the indicator which essentially are meant to encompass in this case two standard deviations away from the mean on either side so that currently means that so if you have a mean and two standard deviations that's supposed to encompass approximately 96 percent of occurrences that took place within that time frame. So based on this linear regression channel, 96% of occurrences took place between this price and this price. It's not to say that we are more likely to trade back into this, but again, it provides a visual guide and you can use it on multiple time frames as well. If you zoomed in and look at that 14 minute chart, you're going to see that the mean of each of these bars was in fact increasing over this time frame of the last 80 bars on this 14 minute time frame, which is why it shows an upward sloping line so out of all the indicators that i showed you today i would say this one is the one i probably understand the least because it is the one that has been most recently added to my arsenal of indicators so if you know a lot about linear regression or standard deviation channels and how you use them leave that in the comments below guys because we are all here to learn and share with each other always so one thing they say is that when we have a standard deviation channel and if we start to see the price closing outside of the channel, it generally signifies a change in the trend most of the time. Anyway, so for example, here we're in sort of a five minute uptrend. If we started closing below the standard deviation line that was created, then it could be said that we are in fact losing that five minute uptrend and a new standard deviation channel will start to form. And this channel that we're seeing right here is going to start sloping sideways and then potentially downwards. So the way it works on TradingView is that it only shows you the price action for the most recent activity. So there's no way you can actually show standard deviation channels for past prices from my own knowledge. I don't believe there's a way to do that currently. So again, the majority of the indicators I've showed you today act as visual guides for understanding price action and charting, except for the volume profile, I would say. I wanna talk about one more important indicator that I look at, and it is option volume, all right? So whatever market you're trading, the options market is going to give you clues about the market. And there's different ways that this information can be interpreted, but one way to look at it is I like to look at the option contracts that are trading a high amount of volume. So in this case, we're looking at the NASDAQ options and the triple Q's ETF. You can see here that these 280 calls traded almost 30,000 contracts. So that's relatively notable. These contracts expire tomorrow and tomorrow this 280 level should be on watch because of the amount of volume that traded at this strike price, all right? So I would say that option volume is in fact one of the most important indicators. Um, one fact is that a large amount of option contracts do expire worthless. 
So that's something to take account of when you see an option contract that trades a high amount of volume. Now, from experience, I've witnessed this a number, a number of times watching Friday closes. So this week is going to be option expiry. I've seen a number of occurrences specifically where on, on slower afternoons, we can clearly see that there's a range been established between a certain price and another price. And it just so happens that the price on the put side has a high amount of option volume and the price on the call side has a high amount of volume. So it makes sense to say that the price is most likely going to close between that price and that price. So again, using option volume to kind of anticipate what the market is likely to do going into the expiry is something quite important that a lot of traders look at, all right? So remember, institutional traders are using the options market as a form of hedge. They're also sitting there providing liquidity in the options market and potentially using futures to hedge their positions in the options market. The point of this video, guys, I just wanted to show you the indicators that I generally use. And it's not to say that you should use any of these indicators or that they will benefit you or not. That's just basically what I have developed over the time I have spent learning trading in the last two years. So in the comment section below, you guys share all of your favorite indicators and why do you use them and how do they help you? How do they help you make money? That is again, that's going to be obviously the most important thing. The last thing I want to say is that if you have an indicator on your chart and you do not know what it does, there is no reason for that indicator to be on your chart until you know what it does. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today. I wish you guys a fantastic day. Drop a like on the video and leave a comment and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.